My name is Ken Onion. I'm from Kaneohe, Hawaii. This son of a bitch here is a humdinger. It's essentially just a big camp night. A big PP fixed blade, field dressing, big game like moose and elk, reindeer, and bear. A blood groove, a little hefty, kind of stout, good for skinning the moose, caribou, bear, cutting the crotch bone, cutting up tent posts and stakes and stuff out of your snow machine if you had to. Handle's a humdinger too, because it's a 3D contoured, ergonomic, thermoplastic handle. Kind of feels like a hard rubber. 65 YN, super high carbon blade steel. Comes with a Kydex sheath. It also has a ballistic nylon, so you can take the Kydex part off if you need it to be a little lighter and more agile, or you can keep this whole system on, which you can mount on your backpack or on your belt, pretty much any way you want to carry it. This is Humdinger by CRKT. Today at CRKT, we're showing you the Mossback series of outdoor knives. Uh, there's two in the Mossback series, a hunter, a fixed blade hunting knife, and then you also have a trout and bird knife, which I'll show you in a moment here. Designer Tom Krein drew inspiration from his years of experience in the emergency medical field, as well as in the backcountry as an avid hunter uh, to create the Mossback series. Uh, they're both comfortable to hold, easy to maintain, and useful in a wide variety of field applications. Uh, the blades are SK5 high carbon steel and feature a black powder coat that is corrosion resistant and is easy to clean. Uh, the jimping on the top of the blade is well positioned uh, for grip in the midst of blood or mud or just taking care of business that you'll need to. Uh, the contoured handle is made up of layered uh, durable G10 and comes in this beautiful pattern of black and blue. Um, and there's a lanyard hole on the back end of this knife uh, for carry options. The nylon sheath securely houses the Mossback Hunter and has a webbing belt clip for external carry or easy pack storage. Uh, overall, the Hunter version of this series is 7.25 inches. The blade is about 3.2 inches. And then I want to show you the trout, the bird and trout version of this knife too the Mossback Burden Trout. It's a little more slender and is about three quarters of an inch smaller. A lightweight and perfect size if you're out fishing or birding. Um, thanks for watching and thank you for carrying CRKT. Today at CRKT we are taking a look at the Larry Fisher designed Hunt and Fish. It's a hunting fixed blade designed specifically to make sure you get your animal on the table after you've finished hunting. Just a beautiful knife with some great design features. The overall length on it is seven and a quarter inches. The blade length right at 2.9 inches. So it's gonna be highly functional inside of an animal, getting that meat, getting her done. You can see there's a lot of great filing and uh, jimping there on the spine of the blade. You got jimping there, jimping there, as well as this custom filing in there that's gonna be useful when you're choking up on the knife. You got jimping there, if you're using it hard as well, if you're choked up or you're using it in that position. You got a lot of different options there. It's very comfortable in hand. That's one of the first things I noticed when I picked it up. It's just like, wow, Larry Fisher did a great job designing this and making it just feel super comfortable. It's lightweight as well, coming in at 3.6 ounces. So it's not gonna weigh you down on your gear bag. You're gonna be able to carry it with you in the field. The handles are a multi-colored, uh, multi-layered G10. So you can see that. And the fit and finish on this knife is beautiful. You got a tapered tang. This is a full tang knife. So that taper comes down right. That piece of steel tapers near the end of the handle and the uh, fit and finish between the G10 and that piece of steel is just superb. You got a, a purple fob on there. Now Larry Fisher, one thing you need to know about him is he did pass away before this knife design came to market and he died of pancreatic cancer. So we put this uh, purple fob on there kind of as a pancreatic cancer memorial. It also comes with a black version of that fob if uh, you're more into a black color. So there's a generous lanyard hole there as well. Let me show you the sheath on this knife. Very cool leather sheath, great look and feel to it. You got a lot of uh, ornate design and pressing in there. I'll show you a shot of it on my belt to give an idea of how it rides. 
there you have it. The sheath also weighs uh, 1.5 ounces. So total, uh, everything told, you're looking at just over five ounces for the entire knife and sheath. So I know a lot of guys count ounces when they're putting their hunting kit together. So there you have it. And there's a shot of the knife next to a ruler to give an idea of how big it is. Again, very cool hunting fixed blade knife designed by Larry Fisher in Idaho, also commemorating pancreatic cancer and the fight to cure cancer. Great little hunting fixed blade knife. Thanks for watching and thanks for carrying CRKT. Today at CRKT, we're taking a look at the home front hunter version with these camo handles. Uh, this is the first folding hunting knife in history to feature designer Ken Onion's award-winning field strip technology. Good for all the hunters out there because you can clean this knife thoroughly while out in the field. Let me show you how this field strip technology works. First, start with a knife in the closed position. So disengage the locking liner here and fold it closed. Push the front release lever up away from the blade. Then rotate the rear release wheel clockwise. You'll hear a distinctive click and you can feel when the handles release from each other. At this point the knife comes apart in three easy pieces. To put the knife back together just reverse the process. Place the blade into the handle in the closed position Put the components back together and make sure the pivot section is properly seated. Once the pivot section is properly seated, press the pivot section together. At this point, tighten up the rear release wheel and once you're set, bring the lever back down and your knife is back in full working order. Do not force the lever. If you're unable to move the lever up and down, the pivot is not properly seated. Spin the rear release wheel to disengage the handles and start again. The pivot must be properly seated for the knife to come back together. Field strip technology is great if your knife is gunked up with lint, dirt, grime, or sand. It works well for hunters, soldiers in the field, really anyone who needs to maintain their knife in adverse conditions. Open the home front hunter is 8.25 inches. The blade is about 3.5 inches and it's a semi-skinner blade shape. It's perfect for the discriminating hunter and comes featured with a 1.4116 stainless steel, which is an excellent steel for out in the field as it takes an edge well and it's easy to sharpen. The blade has an attractive satin finish and see if the camera can pick up some of the cool highlights here. The handles are made with tough glass reinforced nylon featuring this distinctive camo pattern from Realtree and can be beat up and used without any guilt on your part. The overall weight is 4.2 ounces and that's about 119 grams. The knife fits comfortably in the pocket with this low profile pocket clip or it can be easily attached to any gear. We offer the original home front in an everyday carry version a tactical pattern with a black tanto blade and this hunting version here. Join our social media community use hashtag confidence in hand. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing to carry CRKT knives and tools. We've had a lot of positive feedback from our release of the new field strip technology innovation. Anytime you bring a new innovation to market there are questions that come up and a certain amount of education that has to take place to clarify aspects of the new innovation. Here are a few of the most frequently asked questions. You can open the knife in a couple of different ways. I'll walk you through those and then show you how to successfully bring the knife back together. First, we always recommend that you start with the knife in the closed position. In the closed position, First, press the forward release lever up. This disengages the pivot section. Second, spin the rear release wheel until the handles disengage from each other. At this point, the knife comes apart in three component pieces. You can also start with the knife closed and take the first step of spinning the release wheel until you hear a distinctive click. 
That is your cue that the handles have disengaged. Second, press the front release lever up and uncouple the pivot section. And again, the knife comes apart in three sections. Now to show you how the knife comes back together. The primary question we've been receiving about how the knife comes back together is about setting the pivot section correctly. Look at the pillar in the pivot section here. It has to match up and seat correctly with this pivot hole area here. When these sections come together, you can feel it in your fingers when you are reassembling the knife. Gently squeeze or lightly pinch these two sections together while tightening the release wheel. If the pivot area has successfully seated, you will feel it in your fingers. Keep the handles together and tighten the release wheel. Once you're set, bring the release lever down to secure the blade and the knife comes back together. Remember not to force the release lever. If the release lever is not working for you, don't force it down. Loosen the rear release wheel and reset the pivot section again. At this stage, do not tighten the pivot all the way with a T10 or Torx wrench. The pivot seats successfully without wrenching down the screw here. So over tightening the screw or attempting to force the lever are not the moves to make. Simply pinch the pivot section with your fingers and you'll see what I mean. You can feel when it seats properly. Another question. After taking apart and reassembling, there is blade play or blade wobble. This tends to happen after multiple times of disassemble and reassembly and disassemble and reassemble over many, many times. During testing phases, after so many times, generally 20, 30 or more, you'll get a bit of blade wobble. Use a simple Torx 10 or T10 wrench to adjust the pivot as needed and tighten that up to properly maintain your knife. Keep in mind this is an adjustment. Do not over tighten the pivot all the way. That is not what brings these two sections together. The lever does that work for you. When you're closing the knife, pinch this pivot section here and again you'll feel when the successfully seats together. Do not force the lever back and forth or tighten the pivot all the way. We've also had a question regarding interchangeable blades. Due to the tolerances of this first iteration on this innovation, all the component parts have to be exacting. So we're not currently offering interchangeable blades, although that may be an option in the future. What are the future plans for the technology? We're excited about this new innovation and we're working on a few new models for 2017, so stay tuned.